Hello, hello. Once again, welcome to my garden. Welcome to the sunken garden. Five, maybe six weeks ago, I have shown this garden room. And at that time, it was with daffodils, with tulips, a lot of spring flowers. And um, during the season, I have the same color scheme. I am using white, I'm using cream, um, soft yellow, chartreuse, and um, different shades of green. This is a very, what you could call, a formal garden room with uh, different uh, point of views. And um, here in um, the sunken garden, all the plants, they are grown in pots. Okay, the yew hedges here, they are planted um, in the soil. But it's, um, it's such an easy way to garden that you can just move all the plants around. I will, of course, um, give you a presentation of some of the plants here. First of all, this one, this hydrangea, what I normally call the one and only, this is Annabelle. Annabelle is such a beautiful shrub, and you can see here it has um, such a great foliage. Very light, very fresh and um, green. Annabelle will have um, limey to white flowers in um, August, and uh, I think they are just amazing. But there's a problem with this variety. Um, when, the, when the flowers, they are full in bloom, they will, um, they, they will very often drop. Uh, so therefore, I have this support. And, um, it uh, makes it um, much easier to have a great impact. I would also like to show you that we, every early spring, cut um, this hydrangea down to around uh, 20 centimeters over the soil. The thing is that um, Annabelle is a variety which is flowering on um, this year's grow. If we are talking about what you could call the normal uh, garden hydrangeas, hydrangea macrophylla, they are flowering on second year's growth. So it means if you cut them down, for example, in the spring, they will have um, fresh stems and uh, foliage, but they will first flower next year. Um, I would also like to talk about some of the plants here. For example, hostas. Hostas, they are so easy in pots. And um, I think we replant them maybe for after four, five years. And um, we just feed them in the spring. And um, then they have this amazing foliage. And they are so many varieties of um, hostas, and I have many uh, hostas in the garden. They are just amazing. There are very few flowers just now, but we still have the forget-me-not, the uh, musoti, which we have arranged um, in early spring together with daffodils and tulips, but you can see now they are very Airy. And um, I would also like to talk about this flower, the Centra Spectabilis, the bleeding heart. And um, as you can see, this is the white variety. As you probably know, bleeding hearts is a perennial and it's um, so easy to grow in pots. And uh, I really love the growth here. Um, here we feed the plants in, um, in the early spring and um, every second year uh, we add some new soil. Um, one more plant I would like to show you is this sedum. 
Um, it's, um, it's one of the easiest um, container plants you can grow because um, it can dry out and um, I really like the foliage here. So often I'm talking about chartreuse or limey foliage and um, this is just such an amazing scrub. Um, Physocarpus, I know that the English name is uh, a nine bark and also here uh, we cut it down. Um, I can tell you that um, a nine bark is um, flowering on um, second year's growth. But I don't want the flowers. I want a nice and fresh foliage. So therefore we um, prune them in the spring. I would also like to show you the beets over here. As you can see, we're living near to um, the forest, to the woodland, um, to the woods, and here we have many beets. And I think this is um, a very charming story. Some years ago, maybe four or five years ago, we went to the wood and there were some very, very small seedlings. We have been allowed to dig them up and then we planted them in um, small pots next year in, um, in a little bit bigger pots and uh, the year after in a bigger pot. But now uh, they have a pot in this size and I'm not sure that we will um, replant them again. I think they have a great size now, um, almost one and a half, maybe two meters. And um, if, we, if we don't replant them, we will uh, just stop the growth. So um, I think um, this is great. We still have some pansies, this beautiful variety with um, soft colored flowers and uh, we also have the um, viola canutas and um, very soon we will um, cut them down to, um, to the half and it means that if you cut them down to the half, half and um, feed them uh, you will have a second flush um, in about a month. One more great perennial for pots is um, this one. This is um, Polygonatum multiflorum. And um, the great thing with this um, plant is the way that it's growing. You can see it's almost horizontal. And um, the leaves here, the folded leaves, you can see the foldings here, it's great. And um, also the flowers here. It's um, such an easy perennial which is um, quite spreading. In the woodland uh, we have um, some fairly big clumps and uh, yes I think we should also go a little tour to the woodland. Both in pot containers and in the borders I have many shrubs and um, just now we have this beautiful Virburnum. You can see if we go over here, you can see there are much more flowers. And I think that the, the creamy greenness is um, amazing. And uh, we have them in many places. I would um, also like to show you a plant I really love. I think that some will call it a weed. This is um, Antriscus sylvestris. Um, you see this plant at the roadsides and um, I think, I think it gives uh, the planting such an airy impact. And um, this foliage plant, it's really what you could call a wonder of the world. See this, Astilboides tubularis. And um, it's um, great both to have um, the great, the big foliage and um, the small leaves. See for example this one. This is Kerenko Shoma Palmata. Also 
very nice um, foliage and um, in August it will get the most beautiful soft colored flowers. And then we have so many allium ursinum. Uh, if you go to the forest you will see that there are thousands, maybe millions of this plant. Um, it can be a little bit too much. It can be very invasive, very self-seeding, but I think it's just beautiful this time of the year. Rodgea says also a great foliage plant. Um, in the early spring it's um, almost what you can say copperish, browny, uh, and you can you can probably see it here. You have a hint of the color. Once again, chartreuse foliage. Um, this one is also a beautiful plant. This is Philadelphus. And um, I would also like to show you one more Decentra spectabilis. You can see a Decentra spectabilis with, um, also with chartreuse foliage. This variety is, um, is called um, Gold Heart. And because we are in the shade, uh, you 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 just have um, you just have the, the the flowers in pots just now. There's so much to show you in the garden just now. It was um, a little corner I have shown you today. First, it was just my plan to show you the sunken garden, but then I have decided to take you also here to the woodland. Once again, I would like to thank you very, very much for watching. Have a nice day.